Welcome back, my financial freedom fighters. It's your favorite family member, Money Mel Jr. And today, what we gonna talk about is why should the everyday person refinance? Go ahead and like, subscribe, and share the video with your family, friends, and loved ones. All right, so today, we're gonna talk about why should you refinance? Not when to, but why should you? There should be only two reasons why you refinance. Do you know what they are? Mm, let's see if you can guess. Pause the video, go down in the comments, and give me your two reasons why you believe that you should refinance. All right, let's see. Reason number one. We're going to try to keep this one short and sweet. Reason number one is plain and simple, to lower your monthly bill. That's the first reason you should want to refinance, is to lower your monthly bill on that uh, credit. So if you're paying $500 a month, you refinance, you could be paying $250 a month, $300 a month. But that's not always the case, though. This is just only the reasons why you should refinance. So if you want to look at why or when to refinance, check out my other video. I think it's a card right here somewhere. But uh, yeah, so to lower your bill, that's the first reason. Now we're going to get into number two. Like I said, we're going to keep it short and sweet today. I'm gonna put it right here. Number two, again, plain and simple, your interest rate. You wanna refinance to lower your interest rate. That is why you wanna refinance. That's the second part. And I bet you a little, uh, I guess you could say bonus for you all. Some of you all might have not known that you could also refinance your credit card. Yeah. All right. So with this. So with this, when you have a bill, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take your car. For example, you bought your car for $20,000. You know what? No, we're not going to do your car. We're going to take your credit card, for example. You have your credit card. You got your credit card. Your credit score wasn't all that good. So your interest rate was 18%. So when you paying your monthly bill on your credit card, your lowest monthly bill going to be pertaining to that 18%. So what you want to do is you want to wait until your credit score gets better than it was when you applied for your credit card. Then you want to refinance your credit card. And how you go about doing that is you call up your credit card provider and you tell them, you say, hey, um, Bank of America, this is what I like to do. I like to uh, lower my interest rate on my credit card. Oh, what made you want to do that? Why are you call here? Uh, because I want to lower the interest rate on my credit card. So, but like I said, you want to make sure when you do this, that your credit score is higher than it was when you applied. So. If you apply for that credit card and you got approved and your credit score was a 700, when you go to refinance your credit card, I always preach this number. So if you all seen my videos before, you know that I always preach this number. This is the lucky number. This is the holy grail number. Do y'all know what that number is? Pause the video and put it down below. 
That number, you know, I'm gonna write that in green. Cause that's like I said, that's the holy grail number. We're gonna write that one in green. Nah, that's the light green. We want the dark green. That's the number you want, 750. Man, why do I want to do a 750? You just said if my credit score is higher than it was when I applied, when I applied, I had a 700. Now I got a 730 because 750, I want you all to remember this. No matter what nobody tell you, no matter where you go in the United States of America, remember this. 750 is the lowest credit score you could have to have excellent credit. Anything over 750 is just bragging rights. A person who has a 750 and a person who has a 785 will not get any difference in interest rates. They both can qualify and will qualify for the best interest rates possible. So just to let you know that, the best interest rates possible. So that, that second one, like I told you, one of the reasons you want to refinance is your interest rate. We're going, I'm going to touch on the first one. I'm going to touch back on that right quick. So I told you the first one was your bill. So we're going, we're going to jump um, on to uh, this uh, car. We're going to go back on to this car. So I can't draw. We need Marvin here for me to draw good. He not draw. Well, for him to draw. Put some rims on this jump. All right. So this is my car. I bought this car. I got this new, um, let's say I got this new Bentley right here. My car note $1,500 a month. So when I bought this car, I had a good interest rate. So let's say my interest rate was 4%. But my car note is $1,500 a month. Um, so now let's say, why would I want to refinance this vehicle? Why? And when would I want to refinance this vehicle? See, those the key. You can't, well, you can, but you shouldn't just go try to refinance something because you refinance. So let's say this car costs me, let's say, we're going to put it right here, $150,000. When would I want to refinance this car? Would I want to refinance this car when I get a 750 credit score? No. Why? Because I already have a 4% interest rate on this vehicle. Me dropping my interest rate 1% to a 3% interest rate is not going to be any impact on that $1,500 per month, truly. It's going to probably bring it down to about $1,450 or something of that nature. And why I don't want to do that? So now this is when you start diving deep into the whole credit score algorithm. Now this is where I got my PhD. <laughs> it's like, nah. But why you don't want to do that? Because when I refinance that um, and it drops to that, say, that $1,450 or whatever at a 3% interest rate, what I also did was harm my credit history on my credit report and got a hard inquiry and opened up a new line. So therefore I affected my credit report on multiple categories. So therefore now my credit is going to go down, downtown, Julie Brown. So when I want to refinance this in my mind, you can either do it one or two ways, one or two ways. One, is when you've paid off 25% of your balance. That's the lower way. The second way, I mean, second reason is when you paid off 50% of your balance.
So if you want to do the 25% route, so that means when you take that from um, 150 to, what's that? Uh, we doing 25% route. All right. So when you pay that balance down from 150,000 to 113,000, then you can refinance if you want to refinance there. Depending on how long it's going to take you to get to the next 50 because if it only take you a year, 2 years, 3 years to pay off 25%, I'll just say wait till you get to 50% because like I said, every time you refinance, you're going to going to get another in hard credit inquiry on your credit report and you're going to get your good history taken away meaning all this that you was paying on time and overtime will get taken away so therefore your credit report will take a hit so let's say 50 percent 50 percent of um 150,000 is 75,000 So if you can, I'll say wait to 50%. So when you pay 75000 of this loan off, then you'll refinance this loan. So and still, you want to make sure the principal, the, I don't want to say principal confused. You want to make sure the rule is still in effect here, which is that 750. You want to make sure your credit score is at least 750 before you refinance because if it ain't 750 and you go to refinance and it's lower than it was when you first got it, your interest rate will be higher than the interest rate that you currently have. So when you refinance, what we want you to do is to maximize all of your points, all of your power when you refinance. So you're going to hit them both ways, interest rate and your monthly bill. Both of those going to drop substantially. So you want to make sure this rule is always in effect. They will tell you, hey, you can refinance with a 640. You can refinance with a 660, 700, 720. Yes, we know. You can refinance with that. We're not here debating if you can or if you can't. What we're here talking about is when to refinance, why to refinance, and how to make the best of your opportunity from refinance and how to take the best approach to this and obtain all of your power. You don't want just some of your power. You want all of your power. So make sure this is in effect when you go refinance and you're going to refinance after one of two. You're going to choose one of two. Don't choose both of them because you're going to mess up your credit score or whatever, depending on what you're trying to do in the short term. If it really don't matter to you, then go ahead and do both of them. Refinance after you pay off 25%, then refinance again after you hit 50%. And then just keep going down 25 25 Then you'll be finished. But me, I suggest wait till you get 50%. Because, you know, you shouldn't be buying a car that you can't afford anyway. So it shouldn't be hurting your pockets. But, you know, that's the story for a different day. So this is what you want to look at. If I bought a car, I'm going to go over it one more time before we end this. If I bought this Bentley, the Bentley cost me $150,000. My um, car note per month is $1,500. My interest rate is 4%. Now, I've been paying on this car for a minute, so I don't want to pay $1,500 per month anymore. I want to refinance. So what will be the reason I want to refinance? Like I told you all in the beginning, it could be only one or two reasons. To get a better interest rate, I already have a great interest rate. Or to lower my monthly bill, which is $1,500. i am not trying to pay that no more. I need to go out to the movies. I need to go to my buffets. You know, so I need my money. So I want to lower that uh, monthly bill down. So 
like I said, if you paid off 25%, that mean now your balance is 113,000. So, okay, this is the this should be the first time when you start thinking about refinancing. Then if you got to 50% of your balance paid off, you got 75,000 left, then that will be a, a great opportunity to refinance to get out of that 1500 because that 1500 can drop down to psh, about 500 for real for real. You know, you can knock a thousand thousand off. Um, trust me, I've done it. So no matter which one of these you choose to first refinance at, this right here have to remain in effect at all times. All times. You have to have that 750 if you want the best rates. We don't want you to refinance and you already have a 4% and then you go refinance trying to lower your loan. And then you refinance into an eight, nine, ten percent um, car note. So, with that being said, I'm gonna let you take a look at that. If you have any questions or comments, definitely drop them down below. Like, share, and subscribe.